right, I guess uh, we won't have a huge quorum today, but uh, let's start. Does anyone have any special topics to raise before we go for the issue here? Something, some PRs that need extra attention that we can just open and discuss now. Cool, then I'll just start with issues and feel free to interrupt if you have anything more interesting. So CSI clone doesn't appear to work. Somebody is setting an override. Hmm. Okay, so this is like an old override we had and apparently it only supports um, post-assisted clones or snapshot clones. So that needs to be fixed. Um, and when you set up your storage profile to do CSI clones, it still doesn't work and opts for uh, a copy, a host assisted clone. And doing this manually works, but doing this automatically via CDI is broken. And a reproducer, but I think that's fine for now. Let's see if we have any interesting, oh, have a bunch of comments. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen that before. I think this is where somebody was um, surprised by the fact that we inflate PVC sizes. So if you create a 10 gig, uh, data volume, you get like 10 and, and something to compensate for file system overhead. And I guess that's what happens here. Um, and because there was a mismatch in sizes and this user's storage class wouldn't do expansion, we had to fall back to um, host assisted clone. But uh, I see I pointed the, this user towards that documentation and okay. So the user managed to get it working, but we still have like a bit of a surprising factor that we could be more clear about or even prevent. Um, yeah, so I guess this issue is now about um, having, not having to fall back, try find a way to go ahead with CSI clones because there really shouldn't be, like there's no strong case for falling back from CSI clone if the if expansion doesn't work. We could just proceed with the mismatch and have the, have the storage provisioner do whatever it sees fit, either reject or just expand using its own logics.
So I guess I'll just write that down. I think that is a good description of the issue. And there are no uh, objections. I'll just post that, wait for uh, confirmation. OK, cool. And do we have any more issues that need attention? I guess we have um, this one here. But I should I start with this one? It's the newest. I think we go, we try to trickle back so which one was that let's try just starting with this one because i'm pretty sure we have the high availability and all of these under control so i'll just open this one Right, so this is about somebody trying to use generate name for the data volume, but that is, at least with clones, that's uh, impossible to secure with our current approach where we provide tokens for, uh, for cloning from a certain PVC. So generate name basically doesn't work and I'm pretty sure we already stated that. Okay, so error is happening because, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for now, we definitely don't support generate name. I guess what we could discuss now is if we can support generate name um, I am pretty sure it's it has them any way we try to go with this will have a security implication. It will leave some kind of uh, vulnerability or forget the exact wording for for these. So I am not sure. What we can do about this card? Maybe we could just close it. 
I don't know, like, uh, I see that you opened uh, a PR and I mentioned this issue in that PR. Uh, and I propose to add a test case to test this. So I honestly think that that's the best uh, thing we can do right now, just to have a test to cover this. Mm -hmm. And should we just let the issue sit there for now? Yeah, I, I would say so. Maybe let Michael um, add something here since he knows more about uh, the security implications of this. Right. Okay, cool. Then we have um, this one, which I opened. I believe that's tracked downstream, yeah, with priority. Basically, we never want to, uh, with these large uh, images, I guess we never want to uh, ever get to a state where we actually import them. As you can see here, we go ahead and just import that image. Um, so yeah, the tests may have to change because they're not, they're not signaling anything bad, they're just working. But as far as I can tell, these tests were in place uh, so that we so that we make sure the import never happens. I mean, the image gets gets rejected in one of the starting phases and just never never writes anything. So I guess we have to change a couple of tests and. This is also prioritized downstream. Oh, and there's one more thing here. Um, a couple of meetings ago, Michael was saying that uh, we started using the read ahead filter. That may be a little uh, dangerous, specifically in this case, since it'll end up writing um, to scratch container memory or something like that. And that, that is, that may be why we get the disk pressure uh, condition. So. I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. It does depend on which version um, of MPD kit you're using, but the new, the newer versions won't, won't do that. Mm-hmm. I will have a look at this bug anyway and then um, add a comment there. Awesome. So yeah, the disk pressure might not be related. We were just uh, we were just suspecting the read ahead filter because back at that time it, it just merged. So that that's not necessarily the issue. But anyway, I think I have nothing to add here. And I'll just move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I feel like I saw a PR to fix this, but I'm not sure. Uh, sorry, yeah, um, actually, uh, we did fix it. Um, in MBD kit, but mm. there's no, there's no um, bug. So we can't, I mean, we need a, we need a bug file before we can backport it to RHEL if you, if you want the fix in RHEL. Okay. Let me, let me just find the, the commits again. Uh, I see, and then if we want this in the downstream builds, we have to, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But for upstream, I think we kind of follow latest. I want, I want to say that we follow latest. I'll check, double check that. Yeah, it's, it's not in any, um, let me just copy the, oh, come on, I copy the link. So that's the upstream commit. So it is up. The, the fix is upstream, um, okay. but I believe that that's like only in the development version at the moment. If that, it might not even be in that. Um, okay. So that means it will get into rel. Oh, like nine point four or something, if we're lucky. Um, but if we have a bug filed against rel, then we can add it to whichever version you want, even RHEL 9.2, if you like. But yeah, we, we always need a bug file to um, get fixes into RHEL. Yeah. Um, I'm a little hesitant to just uh, start pulling it into released versions. That's because it was only an S3 problem. And I think we don't advertise the S3 source um downstream we just kind of had uh, a community member um contribute this but i can't remember exactly why but we don't advertise this too much i mean it's documented upstream yeah so s3 servers are tra have traditionally been a bit weird and they they used not to be able to support range requests which meant that basically they just wouldn't work at all but actually amazon have added support for range requests fairly recently so um but nevertheless, I mean, you're right. I mean, if you just do nothing, then it will eventually go upstream and it'll, you know, it'll be in the upstream version and you'll get it that way. It's just if you want to fix it in RHEL that, um, that you need to mm -hmm. if you don't care about that, then don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll just sum, sum everything up here. And I can post this link here as well. By the way, upstream, we do um, the CentOS stream 9. Would that also get this uh, commit in? Well, again, I mean, it'll be just whenever we do the next stable version. I yeah, mean, I mean, just whenever. Yeah, so you'd probably get it in 9.4, I think. Because um, I, I don't, this won't be included in 9.3. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the, yeah I mean, if you want it earlier than that have a bug if you don't care do nothing and it'll eventually get into um, CentOS and RHEL quickly uh a reference to bumping uh, 
RPMs, just so we have this documented here. And let's uh, give the this person here a chance to reply before we start complicating this with uh, bugs and backports. Right, so that was this one. And now we have this one, which I think is has been merged for a long time. Um, quickly scroll down. Um, so somebody's saying they see this in the latest CDI. Hmm. Maybe we didn't backport it, or maybe we didn't make a release containing this fix. Is there PR linked? There's no PR linked. It's bug and just been fixed. I think we need to release um, 56Z. So this nice person here can get the fix. So I'll just ask for that. That should fix it for this person. And the original opener will be fine with 54 too. So let's keep this open for this nice person. I think that would be enough. Uh, support rewrite one spot. I think I just reopened it and never did anything. I think it's a good time to start looking at this since the future is becoming stable or become already, I'm not sure. Basically, uh, read write one spot is uh, means that you can mount a volume. A volume can only be mounted by one pod as opposed to read write once, which is a pod could be a uh, PVC can be mounted uh, by the same node multiple times. But now they came up with this stricter version, which is PVC can be mounted by a single pod. It may may work good with uh, I think imports. But I, I, I won't bring this up because I can't remember the idea, the exact idea why, but it was mentioned before that we could switch over import pods to regret one spot for some benefit, which I can't remember or think of right now. Yeah, I guess just nothing should be getting in the way for the importer pod and the PVC it's mounting. And then I guess we can get rid of all the checks that we that we kind of make. We are, we have all these kind of checks that just make sure 
sources and and, and use and stuff like that. But if we use read write one spot, we we could just delegate it to Kubernetes scheduler. I think. As far as I remember, it was not supported in uh, Kubernetes one twenty five. Maybe later. But even if you try to just create a PVC with this uh, uh, access mode, we. Kubernetes will reject it mm -hmm. in 125, maybe later. To... Yeah, we have 27 now. Yeah, so maybe. So maybe 26 or 27 to accept it. Anyway, I signed it, so I'll have a look at it. And clone progress metric doesn't mean meet the metrics naming conventions. And it's not stale. Okay, so this is about following uh, the creative framework observability practices, Prometheus practices, and renaming this metric, which I don't think is being used or advertised. It's just like an internal thing. Um, but yeah, if somebody wants to use it, I think we use it to just report progress for host assisted clones. And that's about it. Nobody should know about it otherwise. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what this issue is about. And it's well groomed. And there's a Jira card. So I don't think there's anything to do here. And we have retained PV that's been around for ages. Um, I think Michael has, uh, yeah, he could also use populated for, but I think Michael has implemented a feature for this. And he's being tagged here, so I'm not going to bug him. I'm pretty sure he he introduced a fix for this by uh, doing the static provisioning thingy for uh, uh, for backup and restore vendors. So actually, I added the way to use this uh, PV. Oh, uh, oh, it's. For it's for uh, it's not for for clones for import right but, uh, for anything I think just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah an existing yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I I added the option of uh, just adding a, a random that we want a, a storage class name to the PV and just put it on the data volume you want. And you'll get it mm -hmm. a while ago. So that that can be used here, but uh, try I think this is more. Things. I think this is more the question here is the RFE is more specific. They want like mm -hmm. a, yes, yes. a PV name yeah. okay. to attach. Mm -hmm. But I I'm pretty sure this will work. Oh, I guess they don't want to create a PVC. They want the CDI benefits. So CDI creates the PVC and I don't know, maybe infer some defaults and stuff like that, but they also want to use the retained PV. So I guess we don't have an update. We don't have that functionality today. Um, yeah, I don't know, but Michael's tagged here. 
As I said, with my uh, with my patch, they can use it. Uh, you know, they don't need to manually create the PVC. Um, but what if they have several PVs with that storage class? No, no, it's not a real storage class. You can add oh. the storage class with the name of the PV itself. Okay, you can use whatever you want. Just a random uh, storage class, just for tagging it. That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. It's not a real uh, storage class. Okay. Got it tested. We have a, a functional test for it as well. I don't remember the PR, but we maybe we should add a link. Yeah, I can find it. Oh, let's see. It's a storage class something. That's it, right? Yeah, that's that's the one, right? I'll just post that, and if it's wrong, I'll edit it later. Not one time, but unique, I, I think. On both the DV and the PV. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Regarding the full functionality, we are not extending uh, the device currently. I Sorry, I was uh, yeah, not really extending data volume these days. Uh, yeah, moving to relators. Yeah, let's see if they uh, if this is working for them. If not, you can keep going. And this will bug me, so that's it. And this one, what's this about? Oh, I opened this before the meeting. This is about uploading. And let's see. Yeah, we had Michael ask if, uh, Nginx had request buffering enabled. So I guess we'll, I guess we have enough attention on this for now. And we talked about this, I believe, or did, did we? Michael Stagg, this guy is basically asking for um making one of the certs that's not configurable not rotatable uh they're asking it to be rotatable so i guess we can weigh that suggestion i think they have the right direction but i will hold off and let michael uh, bless them with a green light And the first one we already discussed and updated. So I guess for for the issues we're done, but if you have any PR that you want to open now, we still have a little more time, we can do that. 
any topics, last minute topics, we can also do that. So otherwise we can also end a bit early, give people some time back. It's also fine. Right, then I guess we will end here and uh, thanks for helping groom the issues and see you in two weeks. Thank you, Alex, see you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, have a good week. Bye.